All right, folks, today I am going to be installing an electronic ignition kit for my 1956 Chevrolet truck 3100 series. And this is the box to the kit that I will be installing. And here is the, the part. And I've already uh, cut about two inches off of it for the length of my vehicle. Uh, yours may vary. You may need that two inches, but I went ahead and cut two inches off. So, and I went ahead and attached the uh, connectors to it so I wouldn't waste your time with that. And uh, this particular kit, from what I found out on the internet, uh, you can use it on. 1933 to 1962 Delco distributors and uh, six cylinder motors. So that's a pretty good size range of years that this is uh, good for. So um, it's been a while since I installed one of these. I actually installed one in my 1961 Ford Thunderbird, I want to say, I don't know, eight, ten years ago, and it's still going strong. Uh, best thing I could have done to it. So let's get started on this right here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom this in a little bit better. All right. So we have the distributor cap. We've got clips on both sides. And I've already removed this wire right here to get it out of the way on the spark plug wire so it'll lay down easier and so what we're going to do is go ahead and pull that rotor off lay it off to the side and let's see grab a screwdriver and we'll remove this distributor points and condenser Now, I will say, I've already done this. Go ahead and remove your, your uh, battery cables. Disconnect those so you don't have any electricity flowing to the truck. And let's see. Yeah, I'm going to disconnect this wire. It goes to the distributor. I mean, uh, not the distributor, but the, the wire goes to the uh, coil from the distributor. All right. And I'll just put these off to the side. Uh, I would just go ahead and keep everything and... Um, that way, if you ever want to put it back on, you can. You will need the screws. All right, there's that part. Put it aside. that keep the screw put that aside and let's see we need to get this out but uh unscrews And that gets pushed through. All right. Now, let me see if I can zoom this in a little bit more. All right. <clears throat> now, we want to clean the inside up a little bit. It's got a little oil. Let me grab uh, some cleaner real quick. Uh, 
Should have had this on hand already, the cleaner. I'm just going to use a little de denatured alcohol. And uh, you can uh, use whatever you have handy. It's got a little oil down in the bottom. Get this screwed up. I'm getting in the tight spots there. There we go. There was so much oil down in there. All right, that should be good. And let me kind of dry it a little bit. All right. Okay, so next step, uh, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and uh, disconnect the coil or get it so I can move it. Got a bolt on each side that's holding it. Loosen that one back there and I'm going to remove this side. All right, put that over to the side and I'm going to go ahead and remove that wire too. All right, now you can get to the coil. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the wires. This one right here, and down here in the bottom is the uh, positive. And that will be going back on, all right. And this is the negative. And if you notice, I have a spare, well, not spare, but an extra wire on mine. And the reason is, that is a kill switch. Uh, you don't find too many kill switches on vehicles anymore. But we had to install that kill switch uh, the, the actual switch in the uh, inside that uh, will kill the power to to where they can't start it up and uh, this truck has been stolen several times in the past and luckily we got it back but or there's several times that it attempted to be stolen also uh, but so we or I we installed the uh, the uh, kill switch on it, so that way we feel that we need to keep somebody from stealing it. We just flip the switch, and they can't start it up. So, all right, now let's see. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, install the kit here, and the 
see. I figure out which way that goes. It's got a gold pin right there. That doesn't look like it's the right size. So there's only really one way to put that in, and it's like that. And as you see, you got a pin that's right there, and it goes in that hole. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and install this screw. All lined up. And then there's this other screw that goes in the back. This one's going to be a little more difficult to get in. sure it's flush. It is flush. And then tighten it down. Tighten all the screws. All right. Okay, now this wire, it's got a little rubber gasket thing there that goes through the hole. And you just pull it slightly until it gets in that groove and seats in there. And there it went. You can see that's in there. Now I gotta try to get this wire to it actually had to too much wire in it, it looks like. I don't think it'll slide through. Let's see. Oh yes, it does. Good. So there. Could tighten it and bring it through that rubber piece. Just keep on pulling it until it gets behind that pin. There. And that pin will keep it from getting over there. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. So there, you see how, how that is. So we got the screws in, one here, one here. Got the pin that's in that other hole. Wire run behind it. You could tighten it up by pulling it this through there easily. Okay, so now I'm going to back back out and attach the rest to the coil. Oops, wrong way. Bear with me. All right. <clears throat> okay, so. So we're going to go ahead and add this to the negative side of the coil. All right. And then we're gonna 
attach my kill switch and then we're going to attach red wire to the positive side. And we're going to tighten that up. All right. Let's see, make sure I got that. Ah, you barely could see what I was doing on that. And let me bring this down. All right, so got the black wire to your negative, red wire to the positive, and I re went ahead and rehooked up my kill switch. So I'm going to go ahead and put this bolt back in. Make sure you can see everything I'm doing. All right. Go ahead and tighten that up. Got one thing. We got the uh, attach the green wire back. So let me back this up. And that's uh, it goes back on the. Uh, positive so let me back back up a little bit and attach that so it's a little easier this way instead of trying to do it and it looks like I lost the net If I can find that nut. Well, well, well. I'm going to put this on pause so I can find that nut. All right, finally uh, found the nut. And I got it attached. So I got my kill switch, everything attached to it. To the coil. Just having to tighten it all up now. Coils tightened up. All right, so let's see. I got. <clears throat> All right, so there's the wire. It's done. It's tight. That should be pretty much it. I've just got to hook up, hook the wire back up to the coil, into the spark plug. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry about 
like that. I'll put the. I'll make sure that you get that capper oil down in there where it seats fine. All right, now let's. Uh, it just fell off. Try this again. And they're tight. So now we'll put the battery cables back on. Okay, now back this up a little bit and uh, see if she starts up. I'll make sure my tools are out of the way. All right, here we go. And that's it folks it is uh, started right up now I may uh, go ahead and uh, check the timing a little later and uh, these wires are all good they're out of the way just hanging off to the side like your spark plug wires I may uh, at some point when I get the engine rebuilt I may shorten those wires up a little bit more but there's nothing to worry about. They're not touching anything. So that's it. Uh, that's how you uh, install the uh, electronic ignition. And uh, hope this helps you. Sorry for the delay in looking for the nut and the rotor cap popping off. But otherwise it went pretty quick. Let's see. So that's it. Hope this helps.